Hello Macro Geeks, it's Mike Motes again and today I want to talk about flower photography composition. Alright, now if you're new to this channel and uh, you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and if a bell pops up, hit that bell because that'll send you notifications on any future videos that come out, okay? Alright, so I have been on the internet since 2004, which is like 17 years long time and I have viewed one hell of a lot of flower photography over those 17 years. Flower photography is the most popular of all macro photography. It, it it's outweighs the other types of photography by huge numbers. If I go to any sites where there's macro photography being posted, typically you see a lot of lot of photo flower photography. And in my macro photo club, same thing. Sometimes I even have to make comments about, hey, kind of need to expand into some other subject matters than just flower photography. But anyways, if you do flower photography, this video is going to help you, okay? Because I've seen a lot of really boring uh, compositions in flower photography, and it's some people, you tend to see the same composition over and over and over. And they just don't seem to think outside of that one style, all right? And it's really important that you kind of broaden your range and get into some more creative type flower photography and I'm gonna uh, do a little video here that you can watch and and hopefully help you and and it's a it's a mindset is what it really is it's, it's the way you think when you go out to shoot uh, instead of in that uh, automatic mode of setting that flower up in a certain way all the time coming at a different angles and be a little more creative all right so hopefully this video coming up is going to help you So I was in St. Louis doing one of my macro boot camps, and uh, these are done uh, over a Saturday and Sunday at a hotel. And on Monday, a few of the people in the club were going to go over to the St. Louis uh, Botanical Garden, I believe it's called, and they were going to do some shooting there. So I says, well, I'll meet you over there. So as you can see, it's early spring. Things are just starting to pop up. And uh, one of the ladies was shooting the tulips, and she was excited the tulips were up. She sat down and got real low to the ground, got her tripod way down, framed up one of these tulips, and she said, Mike, would you come over and look through my viewfinder and tell me what you think of this shot I just set up? And so basically what I saw in the frame was a tulip in the top third and a stem under it, the most boring way you can possibly shoot that. And I told her, I said, Karen, I think her name was Karen, I said, Karen, how many times you've seen that tulip composed exactly like you just composed it? She goes, well, I've seen it a lot like that. I said, yeah. I says, and I bet you have that shot already on your hard drive at home because every spring when the tulips come up, you probably shoot that and you've probably got a bunch of them on your hard drive. She goes, yep. I says, so you've already accomplished that. Why are you reshooting what you've already done? You should be looking at this little flower patch and trying to find something a little more creative than what you've composed here. Because it's a very um, boring shot, basically, okay? And it's been done to death. It's been done a million times, or more than a million times, actually. It'd be like going to Yosemite and, and fighting for tripod space with all these photographers trying to capture the same scene as everybody else there. And this goes on 365 days a year there, ever since Ansel Adams shot it back in, I don't know, the 50s or whatever it was when he shot it and put it in a book. same They're doing the same shot he did. Okay. All right. So we want to come up with something a little more creative. So I said to her, I go, let me look through this little patch here and see if I can come up with something a little more interesting than a tulip in the top third of the frame and a stem under it. So I'm looking around and I find something pretty cool. And so I tell her, I says, uh, after I get it set up, I says, now look through my viewfinder and tell me if you've ever seen a shot like this before of a tulip. And she looks at it, she goes, nope, never seen that before. And there it is. Now you got this little tulip bud that's, that's still in the sheath, this green sheath. And then you've got two layers out in front that are kind of going on opposite directions. That's a great little composition. It's a great subject. I've never seen anything like that before. So I was pretty excited because, again, I want to find subjects and photograph subjects that are unique and different. That's what's going to make my photography stand out from everybody else. If you're just going to shoot a flower in the top third of the frame 
and a and a stem under it, then you're not gonna you're not gonna get too many uh, awards, and you're not gonna get too many pats on the back for that because everybody's done that to death. Here's another one that I shot, another little budding tulip in there that's that's encased in that green sheath, and and luckily the background there was green, so uh, you know it filled in that background section, and you got a little leaf in the front kind of entering up out of the bottom there. Now these I shoot typically at a higher f-stop because I want to get a little more depth of field on them. The last one that you saw, this one here, I actually placed a background behind it. It was a green background and I kind of darkened it down a little bit. Um, because otherwise in those gaps on the left and right you'd have saw the background, the clutter. Didn't want that so I put a background behind it. But I shoot these in higher f-stops, 22 or higher. A lot of them up at that f32. Just so that uh, I get it all in focus or get as much as I can get in their focus. Now this one is a little different. I did the opposite. I went down to the smallest f-stop and I focused on the little tip up here, right up in here. And all I've got is a very tiny bit in focus with that 2.8. And you can see how it blurs down into the bottom here and really nice. So it's a soft focus type of a shot. And I'll do a video on soft focus flowers too because they're really fun. I have all kinds of these shots, just like I was just telling you. I have boring shots of flowers in the top third with a stem under it. Okay? I'm no different than everybody else. I have them too. So I'm nothing wrong with doing these shots. All right? The thing is, though, once you've accomplished the shot of that flower and you go back to reshoot it the next year, don't reshoot the same thing. You've already done that. Come at it at a different angle or find some way to shoot a little bit so it's a little bit unique or a little different from uh, just the standard flower bud in the top uh, third and the stem underneath it. So there's also other ways that we can shoot flowers than front side, and that's the back side. Uh, if I was to take you right now to my two groups on Facebook, I have one called Macro Geeks. Macro Madness Geeks, that's what it's called, Macro Madness Geeks. And my other one is my uh, Macro Photo Club, which is only for the members of the Macro Photo Club. But if I was to take you there right now and show you all the flower shots, you would see 100% pretty much of front sides of flowers. And a lot of times there's very interesting shots to be done on the back side of flowers. And again, that's going to set your photography a little bit apart from others because you are doing something a little different, a little unique, kind of that thinking outside of the box thing. Gerber daisies, which you can buy right at your florist and bring them home. This was shot right in my foyer of my house. And you can see that beautiful green sepal on the back side of that flower. Lots of nice design and texture in there. And that's something that you generally would never see photographers shoot. But there are interesting things on backside of flowers. And I put that one down and then in the corners, the upper right and lower um, right, I put the flowers in there to fill in those gaps that were there. This is just laying on the floor in my, uh, in my foyer when I shot it. Here's another Gerber daisy that, uh, again, the, the backside of it and the petals were going the opposite direction. They were they were kind of working them way back into the back of the flower. Another Gerber daisy backside. And I don't remember what this flower was, but a uh, very nice shot of it. It's got some backlighting, uh, so it makes that uh, all the petals glow. And this was one that was just in a flower pot uh, in the backyard. My wife plants flowers, and I just happened to notice the backside. It was a very interesting uh, design to the back side of this flower. That's a nice, uh, this is a bladder campion back side and it got some backlighting. This blue poppy. Here's another one of the blue poppies back side. Again, everybody shoots the front sides. Dahlia. It's a cyclamen. Shot it right in my house. Queen's Anne lace. And this is a trillium, backside of a trillium. So again, you know, shoot the front sides, obviously, but look and look around the backside, just see what's there. And many times you won't find anything all that interesting, but every once in a while you do. It's a trillium also. And that's um, wild geranium, backside of wild geranium. 
So it just gives you a different viewpoint when you're showing your images. You can show fronts and backs that way. Uh, but uh, take a look. Sometimes, again, there's not nothing much interesting in some of them, but sometimes there are something going on back there that's interesting. You don't have to show the whole flower. This is another thing. I see people, they'll, they'll have a website full of flowers and they show the whole flower in every shot. You don't have to shoot the whole flower. You can get in and shoot tight on flowers like that. Or how about this? That's really tight. So these make great artistic images and you're not um, showing the whole flower. You're just showing parts of it, the most interesting parts inside the flower. The dahlias. Love dahlias. They're fun. Rose, that's a beautiful rose. Another rose shot. This is a black eyed Susan covered in frost. It's got a one year, I was real lucky having to catch a frosty morning and the black eyed Susans were still up. This is a tulip shot in the house, pulled off one of the petals so you could see inside. That's a dahlia. You get in really, really tight on it. Another dahlia, and one more. All right, so like I said, think when you're out there. It's a mindset. When I go out to shoot, uh, I'm not looking for the boring shots. I'm looking for the ones that are a little more interesting, a little more unique. Um, and, and again, it's a mindset. It's, it's the way people think when they go out there. Uh, but you have to be understanding that there is a lot of different ways to shoot a flower. And you have to explore each flower and come come at different angles and different f-stops. Typically, most of these you've seen here are all everything in focus. And those are shot at 22 f-stop or higher. Uh, I like everything in focus type shots. But I also do soft focus flowers, and I'll do another video on that. So you get to see how I do the soft focus flowers, and they're very artistic too. But these seem to do a lot better if you're showing them to your family and friends and stuff. People like to see everything in focus. All right, so get creative, come up with something different.